Count Cosanti. Cosanti is the uh, marriage of two Italian words, cosa, which means things, and anti, which means against. So the idea is it's against things, against cultural norms, against architectural norms. They want to do something different, something unique, something that's going to change the world. In fact, even the symbol that you see before you is the word cosanti, all jumbled up and mixed up. You got your C, O, S, A, N, T, I. Cosanti. Did you guys get that? There's a pop quiz yeah, later. <laughs> Visiting Cosanti is a unique experience. It is both a trip into the past and a vision into the future. Now hidden in an upscale residential neighborhood of Paradise Valley in Arizona, Cosanti was once the studio and experiential home of the futuristic communal architect Paolo Soleri. Soleri had come to the United States from Italy to pursue an architectural career. He came through Ellis Island and settled in the greater Phoenix area. He came to study under the legendary architect Frank Lloyd Wright at his winter home and school, Taliesin West. After meeting his wife while working on his first architectural project called the Dome House, Soleri took her to Italy. In 1956, he returned, and on five acres in the then remote Doubletree Ranch area, which is about 20 miles from central Phoenix, Paolo Soleri took over a small and humble home in the desert. To this site, he brought his creative vision, experience with earth casting ceramics, and a commitment to his philosophy, arcology, a blend of architecture and ecology. Paolo Soleri believed that man, the natural environment, architecture, buildings for homes and businesses should all be synthesized into one. It was at Cosanti that he tested this philosophy. He named his desert oasis Cosanti, which is an assimilation of two Italian words, cosa, meaning things, and anti, meaning against. To pay for this development of Cosanti, it became the hub of the production of bells of all types. Join me on a tour of Cosanti. Before we begin, let me remind you that I would love to have you subscribe to my channel, Curious Barrow. We take adventures, and I'd love to have you follow along. I hope you enjoy this video, and I hope you enjoy the tour. Thank you very much. So he needed to make a living, and he took a skill that he learned in Italy, ceramics, um, and decides to apply them here. He starts off by casting earth bells. Now, the bells came before the building. He needed to make a living right away. And his original bells are literally just holes that he dug into the earth, poured his clay into, hollowed out the center, and once it was um, solidified enough to handle, he would pull it out, carve the designs in, and fire it. And you're left with this beautiful earth-casted bell. He could have chose to build, to create all, any number of things. He could be looking at little bowls or plates or figures. Mm -hmm. But he had the realization that people love beautiful things that make music. Mm -hmm. And he was relatively popular. Um, and it was the idea of the bells that kind of gave him and inspired him to create entire buildings that way. He was often quoted saying, what began as a bell became a home. He just took that idea of sand casting objects and expanded it until he was making entire buildings, which is what you see here. Yeah, like in the big bell. It, it, is, it is one giant bell. That's pretty yeah, much it, or half a bell in this case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, in fact, uh, the, the arch behind me is actually a silk casting arch. It's filled with the silk that we use from the back of the property in order to make the bells. So you would literally go through here, dig your holes, pour your clay, pull out the excess, and then go around and collect them and start carving them before you fire. Now on top of the arch are the silk casted molds. He started out with earth casting, but eventually he decided to evolve his designs and he created these plaster molds. It's the same process. You put two halves of the mold together, pour in the clay, take out the excess. Once it's solidified enough to work with it, 
you can carve your design and fire it. So you get these two very different looking belts. Here is the architect working on one of his earth molds. It might actually look familiar to you. Anyone want to guess where this is? Is that the original the, the gift shop? Nope, the gift shop came later. Hmm. This is the first building he made. It's right here. Oh. Yeah. So he's standing. This is what we're in. This is what we're in. This is oh, the original. Cool. <laughs> this is the original mold that was used to create this specific yeah, structure. And you can see it with the things there. Uh huh. There. Exactly. Um, that's why this picture is so much fun in this particular room. <laughs> the uh, first thing he ever did was uh, this particular structure here. It's much smaller. It would later be known as the Earth House, but it was just kind of a sort of experiment on how to use the cement and use these earth mold type structures in order to create something. So we created this, which would be the earth house. You can see the expanse of Paradise Valley here. This is actually Scottsdale Road. And it's a single lane either way, two, two lane dirt highway. Right. Yeah, that's all it is. Dirt road, yeah. It's a dirt road. Um, in fact, they used to have to chew off because there were a lot of sheep in neighboring uh, ranches because they would come over and walk all over the earth mold. So they had to <laughs> shoo them away. Um, so the funny story about this particular picture is he's preparing, he's going to finish carving this dome, and then he's going to pour the cement for this. Now this building's pretty small. He did all the cement work in half canvas. And why that's important is for a few reasons. One is ventilation. If you look at the picture itself, you'll see that this end can actually be lifted and create more of a canopy type structure, so you get more ventilation. Um, but it enables this room to stay kind of temperate. You know, it's not as hot as outside. It's not as cold as outside when it gets cold. Um, there's a semi-subterranean level here that also helps radiate some cooler um, energy upwards. Um, but the most important feature about the canvas in particular is that it creates a soft diffuse light in this room at all times of day. From the minute that the sun comes up in the east and there's light in the horizon, this room lights up and the canvas amplifies that light but it also diffuses it. So you're not gonna get any hard shadows in this room whatsoever. You can draft in this from sun up to sun down. Here's our into the sand. You can see, you'll see the designs are all different on every single bell. You'll get sets that look similar, but generally speaking, they're all hand carved right out of that sand. They put the two molds back together, set them out in rows out here, and they pull out molten bronze. It's about 100 pounds of molten bronze in one of those crucibles. It's pulled out with this guy right here. It's heated to 2,020 degrees, 2,200 degrees. Pulls it out of the foundry there, puts it on a mantle, and then just goes through and pour bronze into each of these molds. Hopefully, when they pour into those empty spaces, you get a bell like this. If it's uh, not quite right, not, not hot enough or 
cool us down too much, you end up with a bell like that, and it goes back in the foundry the next day. Um, but for the most part, you end up with a bell like this. At the end of the day, once it's cooled enough to touch, uh, then they break apart the sand molds, and they retrieve all their, all their bells, and then the process restarts the next day. So because they're casting straight out of sand that's broken up every single time, each and every bell is unique. We have this particular shape of a bell that is reused over and over again. But all the designs that you see, those are our artisans creating those particular designs on the outside of the bells. All right, there is one step here when you walk through the front door. You can walk around the dining room table and towards the window. Nobody was too tall. You know, he wasn't a short guy. I don't know why yeah, he built he everything. Long I know. Oh, this is nice and cool in here. I know, isn't it? This is their living area. Wow. Yeah, so this is Cat Cox's living area. Is it air conditioned or no? This is just... We do have air conditioners, but they're not up yet. Okay. We, will, we might turn them on at like the height of summer. Um, but it Maybe that's why it's called a cat. cat. Yeah. Now, a cat has two sides to it. There are bedrooms on that side, and then the kitchen and dining are over here. There's a subterranean level downstairs. And you just gotta be careful. There's no railing. Yeah, so the insurance line probably likes us to stay on this side of the building, um, just because there are no railings. It's quite a steep drop. Um, which is very interesting because, you know, this was built in the 60s for a bunch of eagle hippies, and I'm sure they had some pretty wild parties. I, I would be curious to know what, you know, what injuries were sustained living here yeah, really. um, while you're partying hard yeah, in the really. 60s to save the planet, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the other side of the building is the bedrooms. There's four of them. Anywhere from half a dozen up to two dozen people would live here at a time. Um, on either side are the light wells. The light wells, all this property is an experiment. Um, it was intended to kind of test the archaeology ideas and the uh, ability for people to live, work, and study in all the same environment. So um, once they got done here and they kind of, you know, felt like it was a successful model that could be. And that um, balls are actually harvested every other year in Princeton to make olive oil. Wow. Oh, these are all of these? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So do you guys market uh, Cosante wine, or olive oil? Wow. Later, Paulo Soleri's vision led him to create a communal city of the future called Arcosanti. Located in central Arizona, this community is the embodiment of his philosophy of arcology. We hope to visit soon. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel.